Okay, I decided to do a quick little mold making video. So, going through the process of how I do my molds, it can change depending on the object. But I recently had a client come in and brought me some plaster models that she wanted molds of. But upon looking at them, they were just not as precise as I would like. So I asked her if she minds if I remade them. So what I did was I printed out, I took her measurements, designed on the computer the same models. Uh, she wanted uh, slight changes to them. They wanted them a centimeter higher. So I went ahead, designed those changes in, and 3D printed a couple of the models. And then went through, sanded them down, and sealed them up. Next, I used a hot glue gun to adhere it to the bottom, to a base. And then clayed up my walls and got it all prepared using a mold soap. I went through and coated the whole thing. Now, and you want to make sure that you just coat the model and then use your clay to seal everything before putting the mold soap down so your clay can actually stick. So now the only thing left to do is I'm going to go through and add another coat of this mold soap to my coddle just so the plaster moves easily. So I'm just actually going to lather it on there and then probably just smear it around with my hand because this brush isn't all that big. And I've used a lot of different mold soaps in the past. In the States, I used to use Murphy's Oil Soap, which worked pretty well. Um, here in Spain, I was making my own with uh, potassium soap and boiling it down and making it more fluid. But in the end, I decided to buy some commercially made mold soap and it's worth it. Just buy some if you can find commercially made uh, mold soap that is full plaster molds and ceramics. It's so far this is the best mold release I've ever used. It's really nice. So I've got this coated up. I'm just going to smear this around, even it up. Uh, one thing I did with my coddle, this is just a cake foam, a stainless steel cake foam that I bought on Amazon. It's really nice because I can adjust the size of it. It's pretty nice and deep. And the only thing I've done is I taped up the seams, wherever there's a seam. And yeah, so I'm ready to go. It's really important after you adhere your model down to your base to make sure to go along the edge at the base and put a little bit of clay or sometimes I use like a polymer putty or something to really seal that very well. Cause sometimes you can have a tiny little bit of a gap when you glue this down and the plaster will actually go underneath of that. And when you go to remove your mold, you'll chip the edges where your model is. So to have that more clean, go through, put clay there, and then I put a healthy amount of mold soap along that area. So this is looking pretty good to go. I'm happy. Everything's greasy and soapy. So I'm going to go ahead and mix the plaster now. I've already weighed out all my materials. I really like to use a bucket, line it with a plastic bag if I'm going to be mixing by hand. If I'm mixing with a drill, don't use a bag. But this makes cleanup very easy. I do uh, 10 parts plaster to 7 parts water. So I have my water here, my plaster separated. And volume's tricky, so I do calculate the volume of my cylinder and get roughly amount. Usually if I try to just eyeball it, it's, it's under. I don't ever have enough. Volumes are tricky. So all this plaster and all this water should fill this up just under the rim. So now what I'm going to do is slowly start sprinkling this into the water, trying to spread it around equally. I try not to squeeze and clump up the plaster, but keep it real loose. 
bring it pretty close to the water surface and then just sprinkle it around. Don't drop huge clumps in. I'm gonna stand away to not be right over and breathe this. Ideally, use a mask. I'm using cold water. This is gonna give me a longer amount of time to be able to work with it and stuff without it setting up. So a couple of things that'll make the plaster kick off faster or slower is temperature and uh, uh, ag ag aggregating it or mixing it. So if I can put all the plaster in here and I can actually leave it for quite a bit of time and it's not going to start uh, kicking off and setting up until I start mixing. I've never pushed that amount of time letting it sit too long, but I've had plaster sitting in the water for probably 10 minutes or so and it's still very fluid until I start mixing it and then you can really feel it start heating up and getting thicker. Actually, the heating up comes later. If it's already heating up before you pulled it into your mold, you've waited probably too long. So once you start getting up towards the end, you'll see these islands starting to develop. But usually, at first, they're going to start disappearing pretty rapidly and submerging underneath the water. But as you get to the last bit of your plaster, they shouldn't disappear at all and they'll stay on top. And we're going to want to poke those underneath the surface of the water and then let it sit for about two to three minutes. This is going to allow the water to really work its way into all the plaster and eliminate clumps and stuff when you go to pose. On his way out, I do have a little bit of extra plaster here that I'm not using. It's very minimal amounts. But I always like to weigh it out and also do it by eye. So you can kind of see what this is going to look like in the end. I have a few clumps. I'm just going to go through, push those underneath the surface. up and I will do that once more once I finish mixing it. So now I'm going to let that sit for two minutes around about before I start mixing. And I'll mix for another two to three minutes and then I will start pulling in. So when I have this all set up I do like to have, where is it? couple of things close by. I like to have a little spray bottle of rubbing alcohol. And I also like to have a bit of clay. In case I spring a leak someplace, I can have some fresh clay to try to patch up that leak and stop it from leaking. The uh, um, rubbing alcohol is really nice. After I finish pulling and shaking, uh, the air bubbles will rise to the surface and this breaks up the surface tension a bit and allows those bubbles to kind of pop and smooth out. So. In 
meantime, as we wait for that, I'll talk a little bit more about designing for 3D printing and designing for ceramics. I really like to try to avoid vertical seams on items. One, they, they just look ugly. You usually see them and stuff, and horizontal seams are just a lot better. So if I was to make a two-part mold or whatever, I would really look for areas such as this line, lines that are naturally found in the foam to create your seam lines on. Another thing is for 3D printing, if you print everything in one go, it's going to take a lot more time and use a lot of filament. Because if I was to print this just like this, it can't print this overhang, so it would have to make a lot of infill to support this side. But what I did was I actually printed these in two sections, one with this, printed it upside down, and then just these walls up until that line. And then I was also printing the very base of it separate. That just allows me to avoid having to print a lot of infill. Later, I adhere these together with an epoxy, sand it all up, and get it ready for casting. Alright, I'm going to start mixing this up. I do like to go through after I put in all the plaster, kind of shake the bag around to make sure all the plaster is in the water. You don't have dry plaster stuck in creases of the bag. And at this point, I'm going to submerge my hand completely and start doing one of these numbers, or sometimes this number. But I want to keep my hand underneath the surface of the plaster. So going through, breaking up any clumps that I feel. It's also good to kind of scrape the bottom, scrape the sides of the bag and everything in case there's like some air bubbles that are trapped. Once you don't feel any more uh, clumps and it's feeling pretty liquidy, I do like to start just shaking my hand with my fingers spread about. And this just causes more agitation to the plaster, which is going to help it set up and uh, harden faster. I don't like to pull my plaster into my molds when it's extremely liquidy and like water it's more likely to find a way out and create a huge mess Good idea to have a bucket of water close by that you can rinse your hand off and stuff in between mixing. This is feeling quite good now. I don't think I have any clumps. Feeling very smooth. It's also getting quite thick. So I'm not sure if we can see this here. If I run my finger across it, we can see a little bit of a wake that I'm creating. We're going to tap this and get these bubbles up to the surface. So once I got all the bubbles, you can see there's a lot of bubbles on the surface. I'm going to just miss that and you can see all those bubbles have disappeared. Now I'm going to lift this up, pull it in. I'm going to use my hand to deflect the plaster from the model, pulling it down the wall. There we go.
if you end up pulling a plaster in just one area without deflecting it or spreading it out, you can end up getting a little bit of a dense area where that plaster is, is pulling into, which might cast slightly differently than the rest of the mold. And when waking multi-part molds and everything, really important to weigh your plaster and your water out. That way you can get the same consistency all the time and really try to have pretty even walls on your molds. And this will just create better, more even casts. So now I'm shaking this. You can see I had a little bit of a leak there, but not so bad. This is getting almost too thick to allow those air bubbles to rise. Good. Again, I'm just going to mist. One more. One more. Beautiful. Okay. So that's about it. I'm going to let this sit and I'll demold it. Probably I'll be able to demold it in 20 minutes. Should be good. Now, if your foam or your model that you're making a mold of is pretty complicated and has a lot of areas, it can be better to wait longer time before demolding it because um, the plaster will become more hard. It's gonna be really soft as soon as it hardens up and as it dries out, it improves the strength. So if you try to demold it too fast, uh, areas can chip, uh, if your surface isn't well uh, soaked up, then little pieces can stick and just be not as good. I'm going to clean my hands and I'm going to show you the next part of how I clean up the molds. You can see with the bag, Lift this up, throw it away, and be ready to make another mold. Okay. Here is a model that I've already made of this, or a mold I've already made of this model. So this is it straight out of the coddle. After I get from this point, I'm gonna do a few things to clean it up a little bit. One of the edges, I really like to uh, chamfer those down because this is easy to chip and break off and some of these chips and pieces can work their way into your casting slip and it's not so nice. So, and I do like to, before grinding or sanding or anything, I like it to dry out a little bit. So depending on your climate and temperatures and stuff, that can change. Here in Barcelona, it's pretty humid. As the kiln is cooling, I usually place it underneath the kiln or close by. That'll allow it to dry out to the point where I can sand and work on it. I don't want it to get completely dry because as I sand it, there's a lot of dust and stuff that comes out, but if there's still some moisture, it really keeps the dust down. Here is a recent mold that I finished of this model right here. Same design, just slightly smaller. So after I've gone through, I chamfer the edges. And on this one, I also did something additional, created a flat edge here and a chamfer here. And what this will allow is, let's see if I can get this in view. After I fill this up and I'm ready to dump out the slip, I can just simply place it on a flat table and that chamfer allows it to sit at a nice angle and allow that excess slip so I'll dump it into a bucket to get the most out, but then it's still dripping. And instead of going back like this, which can cause it to pull up in the base, 
I like to keep mine angled down and allow that to continue dripping out for the next 10 minutes or so and then I can set it up. So this is what the finished product looks like and that'll be wrapped up and ready to go. A few things I do do right on this edge here it's extremely sharp and it's more likely to chip so I do go through and just break that edge a little bit with like a 800 grit sandpaper. I really don't want to round it off too much, but just get rid of that sharpness, preventing it from chipping. And that'll be ready to go and cast into. Alright, I think that's about it. Yay, mold making.